I've uploaded all the images to Lightroom and I went ahead and made some some just some quick selections uh, as you can see here so I went through I uh, probably made about I think this is eight selections of some of the best ones that I saw and a lot something I can definitely use something so this is the one I kind of uh, want to develop because it had just an interesting shape and pattern on here the light was kind of hitting it at the right spot here uh, here I'm adjusting just my color temperature uh, just kind of getting it to oh, what I'm looking for is that gradient of blue and orange that's the popular Hollywood right now again I'm adjusting exposure contrast and I don't I'm not a fan of using presets I kind of just kind of play by ear on every image um, sometimes I'll copy and paste uh, certain presets depending on what I'm working on but in this case I like to see how every image kind of reacts to, to me adjusting the settings so again here I'm kind of just getting that that nice and I, I'm probably gonna end up cropping a lot of this image out uh, maybe even rotating it yeah so uh, yeah it's kind of messing with that because um, that way the highlight is not as strong and I'm getting just that hint of highlight on the subject so I'm already starting to see it looks like maybe a weird shape of some, maybe a pig man lying down. I don't know, I can't really tell. This is where the imagination starts getting away from me, so. Again, I'm really liking those little threads that are coming. That's from the silver and the white, so I want to definitely accentuate that. So I'm adjusting the clarity. Again, the vibrance I'm looking at. And I always kind of mess with the saturation, because, I, I mean, when, when I edit it, depending on... on the mood I'm in, I usually like to have where you definitely see the, the color and, and then I'll even go as far as adjusting each color uh, each color slider here and again I'm playing around with it as you can see so again it's an ever balance of just trying to find that, that nice uh, medium between the two where I'm looking again I'm looking for that Hollywood gradient where I get the blue fading into the white, but I'm really liking this little yellow greenish blob that's in the center. That makes it kind of a, a good a good intermediary between the two colors there. Again, I think the blue is a little too too bright, so I'm kind of toning that down a little bit. And again, I'm experimenting because. So already we're already coming up with something completely different and unique from what we started on. Usually the sharpening I don't mess with until afterwards, after the second pass. So again, I'm, I always do uh, some noise reduction um, to get rid of any noise on here. I was working with a high ISO, I believe, so I just want to make sure. Uh, I'm a big fan of putting gradients, or I'm sorry, a vignette around my images, so that's some, some, one of my signature styles. Uh, I'm just a fan of doing that. And again, I'm going to dehaze a little bit just to kind of get some separation between the background and the foreground. So I'm liking this first pass here. And we're, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and export a full size. I'm just going to stay in JPEG for right now. Usually I'll change it to a Photoshop file, but I'm just going to go ahead and export it to as a JPEG. And then I'm going to open it in Photoshop. All right, so I'm in my, my, my filter here. So here, I'm just seeing what the best HD processing is. And as I said, I'm a big fan of Nick. And this has always been my favorite one, the dark. The reason I like, in this case, I like the dark because you get a lot more. And I'm probably, right now I'm just kind of experimenting, going back to it. I'll have to remember that black and white. That was, the black and white's kind of cool. But this, one, this is probably what I was kind of going for. Um, I, I like the fact that it's kind of, you see all the, the, the threads and everything. So again, I want that really detailed and accentuated. So right now I'm just messing with some of the options here to really get those, those strands of white that really pop out. Cause I'm liking that, that little thread that it kind of gives it a little three dimensional effect to it. And 
And again, I'm trying to separate as much as I can the background and foreground. So now it's looking more like a caterpillar here. So, you know, now I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to keep, uh, keep it a full bright color or, which I, I think I'm going to. But even though I do like the more the subtle color coloring of it. So as this thing processes, again, I'm working off another layer and I'm probably, what I usually will do is I'll actually just make this, in, uh, I'll adjust the opacity on here so the original image just pops through a little bit. So that way it's, right now this is a little bit extreme on the HD, so what I do, I will always kind of back it down a little bit with, with the opacity. So here I'm adjusting the opacity of the HD image, and as you can see, it's already kind of softening up, but I'm not losing really any detail. So right now I'm going to create another layer here, because I want to I want to really accentuate this color ring. And again, I will go to the Nick Collection, uh, the Color Effects Pro. Oh, let me get let me get to it here. So this is another one that I use a lot, uh, simply because it gives me that those. It's got some great great grading options on here. Ooh, that black and white looks really good. So I I might do another edit with that black and white. I'm already kind of seeing. It looks like a little face. That's kind of wow. I might accentuate that a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that face that's there. It looks like a face like a mummy. <laughs> that's kind of weird. So again, here I'm adjusting uh, my vertical shift in, in the gradient. Well, I'm, I'm, now that I've seen that face, it's kind of it's kind of unique. So. <laughs> Looks like a, a Joker, Joker head there, like a, a sleeping clown of some kind. So again, here I'm adjusting some of. So I, I kind of like that right there. Again, it's a little, it's a little more uh, saturated, um, but again, that's what I'm kind of going for. And, and you could take this, uh, you could take this in so many different directions, as you can see. Um, the sky's the limit on, on what you can create with this type of a uh, technique. So that's already looking really kind of interesting. So right now I'm going to adjust the crop on here because I need to kind of get rid of that that, that highlight that's there. So I'm going to tighten up uh, the crop here and start slowly start eliminating that that harsh highlight that. Where the where my modeling light was flashing in. So here I'm just checking to make sure I have detail and everything. Here I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit on in, in this highlight. I'm going to burn a little bit just to kind of diffuse that light a little bit. I don't want to do too much because then I'll start getting some gray effect and I'll lose my color. So I'm just doing it very kind of subtle just to kind of tone down that just a little bit and that's probably going to be toned down even more uh, when I bring it back into Lightroom when I add another um, vignette to it so I'm not too worried about that corner here I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna check out some different rotations on this thing just to kind of see what I can get out of it it's always good practice just to rotate your image, especially in this type of photography, because, wow, that's kind of another face. <laughs> yeah, I can't get over that face that, that's there, so that's kind of interesting. Now that I'm looking at that, I'm, I'm gonna tighten the, the crop up even more. Now it's starting to look like a cat. So again, I'm I'm, con I'm constantly. I mean, I I want to have definitely some empty space in in my final piece, but at the same time, I want to make sure that 
I'm accentuating what my in, in, my focal point is. So here's like a little highlight that I'm just gonna kind of clone that out a little bit. I don't want to lose it too much because now normally what I would do if I had a lot more time, I would actually go in and clean a lot of this stuff up and maybe even move and manipulate some of those points and threads to kind of make a, a little more of a composition on there based on what I'm seeing. But, you know, for sickness of time, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. But again, you can go in there and really just start messing with the details in here. You know, cloning out some, some areas. I mean, I could, I could spend at least another half hour just go going in and cloning this entire image and making it something kind of interesting. So again, here, I'm kind of just seeing what other angles I can I can kind of mess with here. So I'm really liking that little swirl now. So it's already, you know, I'm trying to do something that's not the, that face. But again, by rotating this thing, you, you definitely start seeing a little more. And even with, with that face that's there. Now, now see how tight that is? That's, that's already a much better composition right off the bat by eliminating all that dead space that's been around that image. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to br I'm going to bring this thing back to Lightroom for some final edits. And the reason I I always go back and forth cuz Lightroom's just a little bit easier to work with as in over doing the overall images and color correction. Uh, Photoshop I use mainly for the detailed work. But I'll 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 usually bounce between both programs a lot. Here's the image back in Lightroom here. So I'm gonna do some a couple little final passes to it just to kind of see. So here I'm dehazing this thing just again, I'm trying to get that detail. I'm trying to preserve as much of that the detail in the threads. I'll do my typical vignette. And as you can see, that highlight that I was so worried about. And I'm just checking my, my color balance just to see if there's anything else that I missed. And it looks like, you know, I kind of like that a little bit, but I think I had a good balance there originally there. Again, I mess with the contrast. Just, I'm trying to make as much as, see, and a lot of this, I'm trying to make something pop out if I need to. Because I'm, I'm always kind of looking at this thing, ooh, that clarity just, that's exactly what I was going for right there. And I might actually leave it in this orientation. Again, I'm just trying to get a histogram that I really kind of, is as balanced as what I'm going for. In this case, because it's leaning towards one direction, it's probably not going to be fully balanced, but that's okay. I don't need to sharpen this too much because of the... Uh, because of the clarity uh, on here. And again, I'm just reducing any noise that I might have again. I don't know, I sh it doesn't matter if I click that, I just have it. So again, here I'm just doing one final pass with the, with the colors. Check, I'm always checking my histogram and see how, how that, that gets affected on there. So it looks like I'm high on the histogram on the blue side, but that's expected because of the vignette on there. And I'm okay with that. So I'm kind of liking how this looks. I think that's that might be a final product right there. I don't know. I think I might end up doing another uh, another rotation just to get that face. I, I can't get over that the, the, the face. I think I'm, I'm probably going to end up... I'm going to do this version, and I'll probably do another version with uh, with vertical. I think that's going to be a much better orientation now that I'm kind of looking at it again. So here I'm, I'm doing two, I did a couple processes, one for the internet, uh, which is a low resolution and one, and one that's high resolution here. So so now here is the final image that you, for this project, doesn't take too, didn't take too long to do and 
very interesting stuff that you can do with this te technique. Again, I'm on, this is only three colors. You can There's so many other different colors out there that you can play with. Yeah, I'm definitely going to probably end up rotating it uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. I just can't get over that face. Thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe. And please check out my website, JaimeCastro.com, where you can check out the latest in my portfolio. And you can check out the link for my online gallery shop, where you can buy prints and different pieces of original art. Thank you.